Welcome to our 2019 Hardtail of the Year test. And this year, we've got a new category. It's the sub 375 pound class. Now, JD, you tested the six bikes in this category. Which bikes were they? Well, the first bike and the worst bike actually was the GT Aggressor Sport. It was the worst bike in the test because it was just too small. It also had the least travel of any of the bikes in so test. So it had a 100 mil fork? No, 75 mil okay, fork. Okay, wow. Yeah, so short travel then. It just made the bike feel kind of a bit sketchy and I think, okay. and yeah, I, I didn't get on with it. So. Next up. Uh, in fifth place was a giant ATX2, okay. uh, which it had a really nice frame actually. It looked really good, uh, but again, it was let down by the fork. Uh, the Suntour fork, you know, it was too pingy. It, the rebound was yeah. too fast. It didn't do a good job of kind of eating up uh, bumps, bumps in the stuff. trail and yeah. stuff. So yeah, that's a pretty standard compromise on those like yeah. 350 pound bikes, yeah. isn't it? And I think obviously with the GT and the Giant, they're both available in like high street stores, so they're, they're yeah. at a disadvantage in terms of pricing, aren't they, compared to yeah, yeah, something yeah. like the Caliber in front of us that's yeah. like more like a direct sales style brand. Yeah, you're totally right. Fourth in my test was the Saracen Tough Tracks, uh, which is a bit of a classic yeah, bike. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's actually a really good fun bike to ride. Mm -hmm. um, it was, you know, puts you in a good shape. It had like a good stem, good length stem, a quite wide bar. Okay. So straight away, it felt quite confident actually yeah. riding it. Um, and then it kind of gave away some of that confidence because the fork actually isn't that good. It's hard, oh, yeah. it's hard to get a fork with hydraulic damping and control at yeah. this price point. I mean, yeah. And traditionally that's why we've kind of um, not had bikes that are this cheap in hard of the year test. Absolutely. This year we're giving it a go to see what you know, to see what's down in that category, so we yeah. have to see how it fares. Especially. Next up is the Carrera Vulcan. Uh, it's got an amazing spec, actually. It's, uh, it's got the best fork besides the winning fork. It has 120 mil of travel, which, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot, but, you know, those extra 20 mil yeah. it make a huge difference to how composed it felt. And so that's our first in-house brand, yeah. basically, from Halfords. And I guess that's kind of the reason why they can afford this, you know, amazing killer spec. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, they're spec. selling it direct yeah. to the consumer and not through dealers. Yeah. yeah. The, the real plus point for me in that bike was that the brakes worked. Um, so were, they, really, were really the hydraulics well. on there or were they cable yeah, actuated discs? The hydraulics, so all the bikes had disc brakes, but the worst ones tended to have um, cable actuated yeah. brakes. Yeah. This one was, this is the first one that had, you know, hydraulic brakes. Yeah. It made such a difference. You yeah. can kind of do one finger braking. Yeah. You could um, modulate your power. It was kind of let down by the fact it's not sized right. So I, I found it, again, a bit too small. That's yeah. another theme yeah, yeah. running through some of these yeah, bikes. Yeah. The second bike was the Norco Storm 4. And I actually gave it the same score as the Carrera. Mm -hmm. And that's because it has such a good frame. And that's more fundamental, really, isn't it? Because the yeah. spec can be changed and modified and upgraded, but yeah. you're kind of, you're, you basically, the frame is what you're, what you're left with. You're, you're right, you're totally yeah. right. And it, it had 29 inch wheels, it's the only bike with a 29 yeah. inch wheel, so already it is off So they're a, bigger, the other bikes all have 27 and a half wheels. That's right. So yeah. they're like, they've got a bigger radius, they kind of roll over bumps a little bit easier yeah. and stuff, and you kind of carry your momentum better too. Absolutely, don't you? Yeah. yeah. It made the whole, you know, you jump on that bike, it's, it's felt kind of, easier to ride in a way it was yeah. smoother it flowed over stuff better so now they also know. had the best size range i think didn't yeah, they? They, yeah they did yeah, yeah. It, it felt really really uh, generous um, yeah. and i was happy on that i didn't i wasn't on the top size bike actually yeah. i was on one yeah. down from which that is, which is great yeah which yeah. is fantastic so there's space to go if you're yeah. if you're taller i'd, I'd yeah. say this this was actually the best frame mm -hmm. in, in the test if it was worthy of that upgrade then yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's a keeper so those are the five also rands yeah. um this is the winning bike. What are we looking at here? This is the Caliber 2 Cubed. I gave it a 10 out of 10. It is a standout bike. It's head and shoulders above the other bikes in the test. You know, it's got a RockShox fork, which is kind of, you know, a proper known brand in, yeah. in it's like the creme de la creme of suspension. And that's, and that's important because it means you can, you can get it serviced, you can get it fixed, there's yeah. spare parts for it. Not yeah. just the fact that yeah. the performance level. Yeah, you're right. And, uh, you know, the rebound was set right, they hit the sweet spot. Like I said, it's not adjustable, but you know, it, has it, hydraulic, right. it has hydraulic rebound. Yeah, yeah. and the, the compression damping is great. It sort of yeah. sucks up things in the trail. It doesn't feel pingy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that kind of influences the whole ride of the bike is, is better because well, of basically that basically you're riding fork. behind the fork, aren't you? Like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Yeah. And then up top, the controls are brilliant. Like yeah. the, the stem is a good length. 
the bar's really wide, so you're already in a run, nice, confident position when you're descending. It was a little bit low for you, though, wasn't it? On you're the, right. Even on the largest yeah, size. Yeah, and I was going to get to that. All, you've got all the spacers yeah. underneath the stand. Yeah, totally. It, that's the only flaw I could think yeah. of in this bike, really. It's just, uh, you know, the front end's too low. They they were thinking about actually having a longer travel fork for this bike. That That's okay. what they wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, they have to keep it to a certain price, price point. point. And that yeah, yeah. that's kind of what gave. And then the frame itself is, is really, really good. Like, it looks great. It's the right size. fits me well. The geometry is kind of modern. It's pretty low. It's pretty slack. It's quite long. It feels like a proper bike. It's got feels. proper knobbly tires and stuff too, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. There's loads of grip coming out of these tires. Yeah. Weirdly, uh, you can get the bike with two different tire sets okay and you don't control that okay so it's just it's but but the <laughs> yeah. alternative is good too isn't it yeah isn't it WT, i think it's WTB. a wtb tires yeah. so you're, you're getting proper tires so both whichever, are fine. whichever way it's it comes just through. that you don't know until yeah. you go to the shop and, and buy the bike yeah. and then you'll see this bike's got hydraulic disc brakes too yeah it's got yeah. hydraulic disc brakes so you can do the one finger braking yeah. the drivetrain's good it's got a good spread of gears it's got 27 gears yeah how come Calibre was able to put together a package like this for less than 375 pound and no one else could that's a good question. Uh, it, it actually is a more expensive bike, really, and it's just squeezed okay. into this test because it, it's on sales, on discount. Okay. It's £400. Okay. Uh, so, but f at the time we were doing this test, it's mm -hmm. £350. Mm -hmm. but so it's actually one of the cheaper bikes in the test. <laughs> yeah, amazingly yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, but that price isn't fixed, actually. I mean, it, it comes and goes. So Calibre will often have discounts giving like 10% yep. off or 20% yeah, yeah. off. So if you see it at a good price and you think it's good for you, then my advice is to get it. So this category was a bit of an experiment to see what was available at like 375 pounds. And like, obviously it's turned out there's actually some really good bikes oh, at yeah. this price point. Yeah. Um, and we discussed earlier about how the kind of test is self-selecting. Yeah. Like the best bikes are in the test. Yeah. I mean, there, there's other bikes at that price point that we couldn't, that basic brands wouldn't sell, mm -hmm. send. Uh, because they knew we were going to test them and ride them like we do every other bike. Yeah. Um, but let's say someone's online and they haven't got, four, this bike's not discounted and they want a bike straight away. They, they haven't got 400 pounds spent, which bike do they get? You get the Norco. Okay. That's the bike to go for. You know, it is a good bike. It's a good shape. It feels yeah. good. And it's a good upgrader. So yeah. that's the one to go for at 350. If you can't get if, one if of these. If you can't get one of these. Do you, would you say, what about if you're kind of toying between the two? Is this worth 50 pounds more? I would say yes. Yeah. I would definitely go with yes. Um, yeah. Because, you know, when you start upgrading that Norco, you're going to spend more. Money. Yes, yeah, so you already get the it. hydraulic disc brakes, you've yeah. already got the better tires, yeah. and you've got the better fork. Yeah. So the thing to do is just to keep watching the website, yeah. the Calibre, um, you know, and jump on the deal when you see it. Yeah. That's what you've got to do. Sounds great.